All right, I guess we'll start since we're... Um, so that's going to be a pretty short talk, uh, focusing on like non-technical stuff for Flatpak seen from the perspective of uh, like a, an application developer and, and not necessarily an end user. So I think most people uh, know what Flatpak is. It's kind of an app store system. So I'm not going to talk too much about that because most much more interesting than what it is is why it is. Uh, I had like a bunch of high level goals that are not really technical uh, that are more of a solution to how things work in the community and how, how we develop on the on the Linux desktop that I wanted to fix. And the first the first goal I had was to improve the user developer interaction. In the traditional model, and whenever I say traditional here, I kind of mean the distro model. Uh, if you are an app developer and you want to do a release, you put a toggle somewhere and you send a bunch of mails and tell a bunch of people about it. And then you sit back and wait for distro to find your toggle, package it up, and release it to user. Um, this sometimes happens directly, sometimes uh, like you have to wait a lot of time. And then your users get it, they notice it crashes. I mean, it's, there's a software, it happens. You report it upstream, or you, you report it to your distro, typically. And, and there you have like some overloaded uh, distro maintainer that eventually sees your bug. Notice that it's like an upstream issue, so you follow the bug is upstream. And then you can see it, and then you can fix it, hopefully. And there are a bunch of issues with this. Uh, the most obvious one is that you might not get your app packaged. Uh, it, maybe it's just too French for, for most distros to care. Uh, or, or maybe it just you know, takes forever for it to get packaged. Maybe your users are, are on Debian Stable, and Debian Stable don't get updates until like a, a stable release, which is every four years or whatever. And, and if you do get packaged and, and have feedback, it gets delayed because this, this, there's this intermediate, the, the maintainer of the distro that has to uh, handle all the input. And once you get it, it's delayed. It might be hard to reach the individual or the, the, the user that filed the bug, or, or maybe he filed the bug against the current package version, which is something you fixed a bunch, bunch of fixes a long time ago, but you know, the users don't see that. So, so the goal with the flatback model is that you are in control of releasing to users. So when you release something because you fixed a bug, it goes directly to the user. And the users report things directly to you. And you get like non-stale information directly from the user. And if you fix something, you can push a fix the same day and you have the user used run update and verify that it's got fixed. So, so this is, there's a lot more advantages here. Like not only the obvious one that you can reach all the users, but it's also like a much saner way to interact with users that, that, that can improve the community and, and the, the way we develop software. Uh, you know, we, we can basically make better software if we have a better interaction model. So the second goal is to separate the apps from the operating system. On no other system does like the app come with a system. Uh, but in the distro model, everything is a package. The OS is a package, the apps are a package, and everything comes with the operating system. And if it doesn't come with the operating system, it's just not there. It's just not possible. So there, there's some, some obvious uh, problems with this. You, you can only use the things that are packaged. Uh, and that's what people notice. But there's also other issues that, that affect how the community works. Like you can only, like you're not, you're not just limited to using the apps that are packaged. You're also limited to using the distros that have the apps. Like you can't pick a random new distro if it doesn't have all the apps you need. And that means all the distros have to package all the apps. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of work in, in, in making a distro. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening in the OS space, but it gets drowned by this 
w requirement for everyone to package everything. That just makes it hard to innovate or, or, or work on the interesting part of operating system development. <clears throat> if, if you were to use something like Flatback instead, you can share the work of maintaining and, and the apps. So like the upstream of the apps do the work of packaging and the distribution can focus on what's actually interested in a distribution world. I think that's, you know, much more important actually than, than the availability of, of all, all the apps and all the distros. Like we can separate these things and make them two. They are not the same. We should, they should be two different things. Um, so the other thing is that we want to protect users and Linux is a Unix and uh, Unix is, is historically considered a secure operating system. And, and I mean, that's not wrong. It, it, it has a bunch of security features. It's just that those features are not necessarily what you want. Um, their goal is to make you not be able to install printer drivers. Like if we're talking about a modern laptop where you run on your personal system, the only like thing that the, the, the Unix multi-user system, uh, like permission system brings you is you can't do stuff that you would like to. It doesn't actually protect you in the way you'd expect it to do, right? If you run a game that you just downloaded, you don't want it to be able to read your mail or, you know, steal your Bitcoin or what have you. I mean, it's just, there's no isolation whatsoever to protect you from, or your data, which is what you have on your, uh, on your home directory, basically, from the app or for, for or protect the data of one app from another. There just isn't any in the traditional Unix environment. So what we want is a way to isolate an app so that it cannot affect things that we don't want it to, but also we can uh, control what it does and, and you know, ensure it, it doesn't you know, send spam on the network or whatever if we don't want it to. Uh, obviously, we have a 30-year-old you know, history of, of software and it's not meant to be sandboxed. So all software that we have is not going to work in a sandbox environment. So we, Flatback has a very pragmatic approach to this, where you can punch hold in the sandbox, uh, and, and you know a lot of people get us give us a lot of flack about that. But in practice, it's more interesting to be able to use apps than not. Uh, but you know, long term, we want to make the sandboxing solution work, you know, as well as possible, so that apps can migrate to the, that model. So those are like kind of like the high level goals. And uh, I want to continue with some, you know, concepts and ideas that you get, uh, that you will see a lot when you start developing on Flatpak. So the first concept is that of runtimes. Applications depend on something called a runtime, which is really just a word for shared dependencies and dependencies are things like files like you have a library file that you share and sharing it means you know we only store it once uh both in disk and in, in uh, the disk cache but it also means that you can share the maintenance of the core uh, dependencies like you app developer aren't necessarily super interested in in you know glibc versioning or, or hardcore low-level features like how you make the GL drivers work. So forcing those on apps, app developers would be a bad thing. So runtimes is a way we can avoid uh, that and shared maintenance. And they're parallel installable, they're version, you can have many of them. Each individual app can test against one and choose when they want to update to the new version. Not There's no flag day where everyone has to move or anything like that. It's up to each individual maintainer. And if you do get updates there separately, so like even an app that doesn't get updates gets update for the runtime, which is where most of the core security problems might show up. So that's good. Uh, another concept that we see a lot is sandboxes. And the, the, the Flatpak sandboxes are built on something called bubble wrap, which is 
really just a command line interface to the kernel APIs that we have for these C groups, namespaces, set comp, that kind of stuff. It, it's similar to what Docker uses. The, the, the main difference is that we have automatic integration with all this kind of stuff that uh, the that the desktop requires. It just sets up all these sockets and it has filter dbus access and and you know it, it sets up the right drivers in the right way and all, all those kind of low level things that apps eventually will need. And then we have the concept of permissions, which really is just about punching holes in the sandbox, right? So. We, we show you during installation, this app will require these holes. If that's okay, you can install it. You can actually then override it. Even, even though you your app required network access, you can then override it to not let it have it. I mean, in practice, this probably just breaks the app, but you know it, it is possible. Uh, but those are kind of static permissions that are set on, uh, on launching of the sandbox. We also have something called portals. And portals is, is more like a name for a concept of dynamic permissions, uh, where you have something running outside the app that does interaction with the user and controls the access to things like, uh, you know, do do you want do you want the the app to have access to a camera? The camera portal would be something that asks the user to pick a camera, and and then the this interaction grants permissions to the calling app. Uh, you know, the, the most commonly used example is the file chooser, where the entire file chooser would run outside of the app, and only the final uh, selection would be passed back to the app. Flatback Builder is a tool we have, which is how most Flatback apps are built. It's not really a core part of Flatpak. Uh, you, you can, and, and some do build Flatpaks in other ways. Like it, basically, since it's just a file, you can, a bunch of files, you can basically, you know, create a bunch of binaries in, a, in the right directory and, and produce a Flatpak. But most things use Flatpak Builder. It has a, a JSON or JAML manifest. To build stuff using Flatpak, so it's very reproducible. It runs on any distro. It uses runtimes again to build, although they they are a custom style of of uh, runtimes called SDK, which is you know full of de development uh, tools. So here's a typical <clears throat> typical uh, more typical. This is a very small uh, manifest for building an app, and then we have Flatpak. If you want to, well, basically, anyone can create a Flatback repo. We think that's very important. However, in practice, everyone basically use, uses Flattop. It's good, better for everyone, uh, both developers and users. Nick, I guess my time is up. I don't know if there's anyone after this or if we have time to do questions or something. We absolutely have to do questions. We have a so answer as much as you like. The question is in the shared notes. Are there any plans for hand and distribute individual services for Flatpak or another tool? So it is a system of server help. Like a gap in comparison to Snap and traditional method methods such as Deb, RPM, etc. Hmm. Yeah. So, so obviously there, there is you know completely non desktop things like running a, a a web server or something. And 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 in that case, I think we're just not interested in in competing with that because the the things that Flatpak does well, which is integration with a desktop, is it's not interesting for that those kinds of apps. And and on the other hand, if you look at the tools that that are available for for that kind of thing, which is you know Docker, Kubernetes, all these clustering things, the things they do is not something that Flatpak does, like port forwarding or complicated network setups and automatic scaling and all that. We are not interested in doing that. So 
we, we don't have, we, we don't want to compete with that. I mean, I guess there is an overlap where you have a, a desktop thing that kind of runs as a server in the service in the background. And, and there's, there's also the command line thing where, you know, some command lines are just server style things. And some more, more like Midnight Commander, which is more like an app that runs in in, a, in the command line. So there is this, these corner cases where it, it is possible to run command line apps in Flatpak. We have some interaction uh, with them to try to make them more better, work better. Uh, we create wrapper file that you can easily alias into your as, as a command line. Uh, or, like alias, so you can easily run them. But and we do have some. We have things like a portal to automatically add a, a like a start on logging to the desktop. You can start up a background thing. I think uh, we do have portal that lets you add that. But you still have to kind of launch your app once, and then you can it can ask the desktop to have an auto start file. Could we do better than that? Possibly. Is it interesting? It's certainly not in the focus of what we're working on, but it might be. There might be things we could do better. All right. Well, it looks like that. Oh, we do have a second question. Great. Okay. Second question, now that Flatpak 1.0 is out and is becoming more stable, what's the next big feature? Or is it more around tools around around it, such as portals? Yeah, I mean, so, so actually the next version is gonna be kind of a large change, but it's mostly in internals uh, for scaling uh, better on the network because FlatHub is reaching uh, like a thousand apps and it's gonna be, Going to be important to to keep be able to keep going as the size goes up. So 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 the next release will have kind of a large internal changes, but it might not necessarily be a very visible change. Um, that being said, I guess we have some new features that are interesting to look at. Uh, more better support for different types of of uh, network namespacing, like. Right now, net, network access is an all or nothing thing. We're looking at maybe using some kind of uh, NAT-like filtering or something. And and there, there certainly is a lot more work in the portals side of things, and and, and even uh, like pipe wire and things in the in the in the larger ecosystem, rather than Flatpak itself. I think as you know, we get most features and, and, and things basically just work, uh, I expect the development speed of Flatpak itself kind of slows down. And, and you know, the things around it, such as, you know, actually working on uh, the runtime so, uh, you know, and the portals and all that stuff. One, th one thing that, that I think kind of ties back to the previous one is the previous talk is that if we ha have some initial work on the technology for for authentication and payments of flat packs. And I think it would be interesting to have, you know, a way to pay for flat packs. But that's a, mostly done on the technical side and, and all all that has to be done is on the actually doing it and there's a lot of legal issues and you know actually having payments working and all that 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 i think it's is something really important to get done but again it's not necessarily in flatback itself it's more the stuff around it <laughs> 